Good and lovely morning, children of the Most High God. It's Monday, and with every Monday, we know God blesses us with a new message. And this week, the message is uh, God loves the unlovable. God loves the unlovable. And as I wait for those who congregate with us every Monday, not Monday, every weekday morning on Instagram live, I'll be singing a beautiful hymn that commemorates the love that God has for us. It says, Jesus loved me. Yes, I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Pressing on the upward way, always guide me, Lord, I pray. Undeserving and stubbornly, never fails to love me still. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves you. And yes, Jesus loves us. The Bible tells us so. We are so loved, loved one. The Bible says, His steadfast love. Underline steadfast. Which means unshakable. Which means it stands under all circumstances. His steadfast love and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. I'm very emotional this morning. Because you must remember, I heard the word before you hear the word. And the love that is about to outpour in this message is the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. God loves the unlovable. That is the title of our message this morning. And I'm already crying. I'm not even talking about his love yet, but I'm already overwhelmed by it. So today we're going to be reading Matthew chapter 9. I'm going to put it quickly in the chat. Verses 9 to 13. Then we're going to read Hosea. mm, Hosea 6, 6. Then we're going to read Luke 18. 9 to 4. 9 to 14. Uh, 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 My punctuation is showing me flames right now. 9 to 14. hmm, As we learn about how God... Loves the unlovable. All right. Matthew 9, 9. Matthew 9, 9. Let's go there quickly, loved one. As we hear the word of our God this morning. The Bible says, Jesus calls Matthew. All right. As Jesus passed from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting in the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he rose and followed him. 
You must remember at this point in scripture, Jesus had just healed a, para, a paralytic, right? And the scribes had, had asked him, why, why does he say he can forgive sins? Because as the paralytic was brought to him, he saw the faith of the paralytic and those who brought the paralytic to him. And he said, son, your sins are forgiven. Right? And the scribe says, who does this? This man commits blasphemy. How can he say he forgives sin? And Jesus says, is it easier for me to say your sins are forgiven or for me to say stand up and walk? And right after that, he says to the paralytic, stand up and walk. And the paralytic picks up his mat and he walks. And so Matthew must have witnessed this miracle because how is it that a man could just pass by and say, follow me? <laughs> And you get up out of your tax collector booth, Matthew, and you follow him. It is because you saw the wonder that he just performed, isn't it? And so Jesus says to Matthew, who is a tax collector, <laughs> if you don't understand in the context of Jesus' day what a tax collector was, tax collectors were hated by the Israelites. If your child became a tax collector in the time of Jesus, you disowned him. He was no longer welcome amongst the children of Israel. He was an outcast. He was an unlovable. But Jesus walks past everybody else and goes to Matthew the unlovable and says, follow me. And Matthew gets up out of his booth. He rose and followed him. All right. And as Jesus reclined at the table in, in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus is not found in the temple with the holy, holy, righteous ones. He reclines with tax collectors and sinners. And it raises the eyebrows of the Pharisees. And they ask his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Yeah. He says, those who are well, the righteous, the upright, they have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. Then he quotes Isaiah, Hosea 6.6. 6. He says, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. I came not to call those who were easily loved, but I came to call the unlovable. <laughs> and he tells them, he gives them homework. He says, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. So let's go to Hosea 6.6. 6. So we start to do the homework that Jesus gave the Pharisees in explaining why it is that he has come for the sick and not the, the well. <laughs> the Bible says in Hosea 6.6, 6, and maybe just to give you a bit of context as to wh what kind of Israel this letter, this part of scripture has been written to. It's Israel who goes back and forth into loving God. In fact, in, a part, in this part of scripture, he says that their love is like dew that goes away early. You love me, you love me not. You love me, you love me not. You you yo-yo between obedience and disobedience. And he says this to them in Hosea 6.6. 6. He says, for I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. It said that it, he actually means I desire to show mercy and not receive sacrifice. I desire you to know me and not offer up burnt offerings. Jesus came for the sick. He came for the unlovable. And as I was reading the scripture, the Holy Spirit said something to me. He said, 
sometimes you disbelieve that God is love and you start to think that God is wrath and you forget that you need to sit with the physician in order for the physician to heal you. Some of you don't sit long enough in the presence of the physician for you to be healed, but instead you shun and shame yourself out of the love of the Father and you flee like the prodigal, but you don't sit long enough for the unlovable to be transformed, for the sick to be healed. <laughs> because in your heart of hearts, you don't believe that God is a God of love, but you believe that he's a God of wrath. And because you are yo-yoing between the two, you mistrust him because you never know what to expect. You don't know if God is aligned with love with you or he's aligned with wrath. And then the Holy Spirit said to me, Musidi, you're a parent, you're a mother, you're a father. You, I said I created you in my image. Let me demonstrate my image to you through you. When you love your sons and your daughters on this planet, you human beings who are unrighteous, there are times where you express your wrath in discipline, yeah. But does it ever stop the love that you feel towards your daughter? It never does. Even in the correction, there is love that is the foundation of the correction. But when it comes to me, you think I hate you because I periodically express my wrath. And so you don't sit with the physician long enough to be healed. <laughs> Instead, you feel so unworthy, you barely approach the throne of mercy. But it is the throne of mercy. Because he desires to show us mercy. He desires us to know him. He desires it above sacrifice. He desires it above tithes. He desires it above anything we do. As a show of our repentance, he desires us being in close intimacy with him, to know him. And so I implore you, brother. And I implore you, sister. That God's hand is never too short to save you. He never stops loving you. And the Bible says this so often. It says he, 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 his throne is steadfast love. He shows us steadfast love. Steadfast, 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 never ending. It endures. It lasts forever. It's from everlasting to everlasting. He loves you always. He loves you always. And he has come to save the sinner. He is the physician who's come to heal the sick. And that is why Jesus in his time here, he was not reclining in the temple with the Pharisees and those who were obviously holy and righteous in their own sight, but he reclined with tax collectors and prostitutes and sinners. This is who he came for. We who are unlovable. We who the world outcasts. We who the world says we do not belong. We who are not easy to love. He loves with an everlasting love. And so he says, Jesus, demonstrating that he's come for the unlovable, that he desires mercy and not steadfast love. All right. What does that look like? What does that look like? It looks like what's happening in Luke chapter 18, verse 9 to 14. Luke 18, verse 9 to 14. The Bible says, the Pharisee and the tax collector, the loved and unlovable, if you'd like, the righteous and the unrighteous, uh, if you would like, he says. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. 
The righteous Pharisee said, God, I thank you that I am good. God, I thank you that I am righteous. God, I thank you that I'm obedient. I'm not like the extortioners. I'm not like the adulterers. I'm not like the sinners. I'm not even like this tax collector. And verse 12 says, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. I am obedient to you. I obey your law. I obey your commandments. Thank you, God, that I'm not like these disobedient ones. But in verse 12 comes the unlovable. And the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. But the tax collector, feeling unworthy, feeling like he doesn't even, he doesn't qualify to stand before the Lord. His shame wouldn't even allow him to lift his eyes up to the heavens. He beat his chest and he said, God, mercy. God, be merciful to me. Be merciful to me, a sinner. And verse 14 says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. He says, I tell you that the sinner, the tax collector, the adulterer, the extortioner who beats his chest and cries for the mercy of God goes to his house justified over the Pharisee who proclaims his righteousness and his obedience over others. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. But the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Hmm. Jesus has come to save the sinner and the sick. Because he desires to show us mercy over sacrifice. He desires that we know him over burnt offerings. So sometimes when you find yourself a sinner in stumbling, because you look at yourself with the contempt that the Pharisee looked at the tax collector, you feel so unworthy of the love of God. Because you yo-yo between I love him, I love him not, and disobedience and obedience. Because you are unlovable. You flee from the presence of God. But this morning, God wants to remind you that he loves the unlovable. That he shows us steadfast love and mercy every morning. That you need not run away from him, but prodigal run to your father. Because just because you feel unlovable does not mean that your father stops loving you. He's your father. And he loves you. Even when you stumble and sin, he loves you. Because he's come to heal you. So let him heal you with his love. And don't run away from him when you fall. He is the great physician. He has come to heal the sick. And you know you are sick because the good you want to do, you don't do. But the evil you don't want to do, you do. And he's come to heal exactly that. So will you sit long enough at the foot of the throne? Will you recline long enough with Jesus? Will you grow your knowledge enough in the Lord that he will be able to heal you, O unlovable? Because he has come to save us. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the evil and lovable ones. For God so loved his enemies first. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him may not perish. But have eternal life. Will you sit long enough. But the great physician. As you are being sanctified, as you get up every time you fall, will you sit long enough with the God of love, who is love? God is love. The Bible says he is love. 
He never stops loving you. He never stops loving you. He loves you all the days of your life. Will you sit long enough in his love that he may heal you of your sinfulness? We shortchange ourselves so much because we truly believe that God desires sacrifice and burnt offering. And so we are diligent in the tithe and diligent in the burnt offering, but we're not diligent in knowing him because we don't feel worthy. We feel like we have to earn it. We have to give something to earn his favor. But David says his anger is but for a moment, but his favor for a lifetime. So stop running away from him. Stop running away from the Lord because you feel unworthy. He loves you. As unlovable as you feel, as unworthy as you feel, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you. He never stops loving you. He never stops loving you. He came for you. He came for you. Jesus' assignment was you. He came for you. So don't condemn yourself out of his mercy. But run to your loving, compassionate Father. He awaits your return. Your full return, your unabated return, your unimpeded return, where shame no longer has any hold on you, where shame no longer causes you not to pray, where shame doesn't cause you not to even read the Bible. He has come to read you of shame. He came for you. Oh, unlovable. You are so loved. Holy Spirit, we thank you for this reminder that for God so loved the world, for God so loved me, for God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son, that your heart, O oh God, is a heart of love, that at your core, O oh God, is love and not wrath towards us. Father, for so long we thought you hate us because we are unlovable, because we are unrighteous, and we do sin, and we do fall. But Father, you remind us this morning that you love us regardless, that you never stop loving us. Thank you, Jesus, for demonstrating that love on the cross for giving your life because of that love. The Bible says what love, what deeper love does a brother have for another than to give up his own life. <laughs> we forget sometimes because we accuse ourselves to ourselves. We forget, oh God, because the shame of our sin drowns our souls. But today you give us <laughs> this saving grace a reminder that, Father, you desire to show us mercy over sacrifice, that you do not delight in our punishment, no, but you delight in our knowing you, O oh God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for redeeming us. Thank you for restoring us. Thank you for reminding us, O oh God, that as long as we are able to stand before you and ask for mercy and beat our chest as the text collector beat his chest, that your mercy is able to save us, that your grace is able to cover us, O oh God. We beat our chests this morning and we say, have mercy on us sinners, O oh God. And we're grateful because you remind us that you do show us mercy. And that we go today justified as the tax collector went down to his house justified. And even us who are Pharisees, who have looked down on others, who have looked down on the tax collectors and the sinners, heal us, so great physician, heal us, so Jesus, that we may know that you love the unlovable, 
whether we may be the unlovable or we may see the others amongst us as unlovable, that you love us all, O God, with a steadfast love and you continue to show us mercy every morning. Oh, this takes a weight off our shoulders. Oh, we breathe easy in the knowledge of your love. It gives us peace that surpasses all understanding. To understand how deep, how wide, how long is the love of Christ for us. It drives us to tears. It overwhelms us, so oh God. But it's tears of joy because you release us from the shackles of sin with your love, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for loving us enough to be us. We are because of you. We stand because of you. We are because of you. And we thank you, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, merciful God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, God. For loving the unlovable. For loving the parts of us that are unlovable. Thank you. In your beautiful name we pray. In your matchless name we pray. In your victorious name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Mm. Yes. Amen. I told you we were going to cry this week. <laughs> I warned you. This is but the beginning. If you haven't bought a box of tissues where you are, go buy a box of tissues today. Because God is about to remind us of his reckless love for us. Just as he's done this morning. May this word land on your heart as fertile soil. May it be the word that heals you. May it be the remedy the physician gives to heal you, O oh sick, <laughs> to make you well, to make you well. I love you. I love you with the love of the Lord. And may he help you understand his love for you. Mm. Mm. May he help you understand it. Because only when you understand it will you be made well. Have a lovely day. Hmm. Have a lovely day in the Lord. <laughs> God keep you. Shine his light upon you. Heal you. Grow you in the knowledge of him. And if you are available tomorrow, meet me here as we continue to learn the love of our God for us. Remember to go like, remember to go share, remember to go comment. The more you engage with these posts, with these uh, uh, videos, the more it is peddled to other believers so they may come to know what we now know. Seho is reminding you, don't forget to subscribe to YouTube, beloveds. We're trying to grow the ministry that side so that the, the audience may be bigger for the word of the Lord. 
Thank you for co-working and co-partnering with me in the gospel in this way. I don't take for granted every effort you put in to support me. I thank God for your support because it is also the encouragement I get to show up every single time God calls me to show up. So sister, brother, I ask of you to just like, to just comment something, to share it somewhere with somebody that they may be revived in spirit. The mandate of this ministry is to encourage and edify the children of God. Help me to fulfill it. And that's all I ask of you. Mm. Let's go bask in the warmth of our Father's love today. Let's go bask in the warmth of the love of the Father today. And I'll see you again tomorrow. All right? On YouTube in the evening time, on Instagram in the daytime, in the morning, on Facebook in the daytime, in the morning, because I also share this to Facebook. Remember how loved you are. Never forget it. As unlovable as you feel, never forget it. Just how loved you are by the Father. That while you were still enemies with God, he first loved you and gave his son up for you. Don't you forget it. As you stumble through life, don't you forget it. You are loved. All the days of your life you are loved. Every morning, love and mercy follow you. New batches of mercy are issued out for you. Because he desires mercy and not sacrifice. Yeah. See you again tomorrow. Bye, bye, bye.